One of the questions often that new players to Ark Survival have is how do I breed my first creature? And in this guide, I'm going to show you some basics about breeding. I don't want to touch upon end game stuff and stacking mutations because it can get quite in depth. But for this example, I've got a couple of Uteranuses. So we've got an unfertilized egg here and unfertilized eggs are used for making kibble. You can get unfertilized eggs just from wild creatures and you might stumble across the odd egg in the wild and Uteranuses incidentally on the island map are one of the few ways to make extraordinary kibble. So unfertilized eggs are used to make kibble and to increase the rate in which our Uteranuses lay unfertilized eggs we can use an Overraptor. By enabling our Overraptor to wander, you can see that a symbol's just popped up and this is increasing the rate in which unfertilized eggs will drop. And I've over encumbered this Overraptor with stone so it can't actually wander off. So we've just placed it next to our UTs and that will give us more unfertilized eggs. But today we wanna be hatching our first creature. So let's just set these guys off to mate while we go over the basics of temperatures and incubation. So they're both breeding. I've already got the female set to breed. So while she's doing that, let's just touch upon what insulation means within this game. So let's start with player insulation. I'm currently wearing a full set of hide armor. And as you can see, our hypo and hyper insulation is actually quite low. We can increase that with the otter. The otter is actually a great way to increase insulation for both hot and cold. And as you can see, it's significantly gone up on both hot and cold insulation. To increase that even further, if we actually pump some melee damage into our otter, it increases its insulation. So now we just re-equip it and you can see the points in insulation have just gone up slightly and that's increased our player's insulation. Now, if we just come over to our air conditioning here and just stand here, you can see our hypo and hyper insulation has increased significantly here. Now, I know it's a little bit counterintuitive that air conditioning actually improves hot and cold. Now, one of the other things that increases player insulation is fortitude. When you're far enough in the game, you can actually increase your fortitude. So that's one of the ways that the hot and cold work in this game. So let's just wait for this female to lay its first fertilized egg. And we'll be right back. Okay, there we go. Our female's just laid its fertilized egg. And you can see it's giving off this red aura, as well as noting that it says that it's a fertilized uteranus egg. But it also says that it's too cold to currently hatch this egg. So if we just bring it over to our air conditioning units and drop it here, it will be warm enough. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it will be warm enough to actually hatch this egg. Now, air conditioning can be a little bit more mid to late game. So in order to hatch this egg, and if you don't have access to the air conditioning units, there's a few things that we could do. Being that the Uteranus actually requires it to be a little bit hotter, we could actually place some campfires around this egg. That'll increase the temperature and we'd be able to incubate it that way. We can also use a Dimetrodon. These creatures are found around the swamp area and as you can see, just placing the Dimetrodon next to the egg, it's actually incubating it. And just like the Otter, when it increased its melee damage, Increasing melee damage on the Dimetrodon will also increase its hypo and hyper insulation, essentially making it quicker to hatch the egg. So let's bring this over to the air conditioning and hatch this egg. Okay, there we go. So our first dinosaur has hatched. We just need to claim our baby and let's just bring it over here a little bit. So upon hatching your first egg, you do need to hand feed your creature. They won't actually eat from the feeding troughs when they're babies. So you do need to shove a little bit of food on them. Let's just grab a little bit of meat as the Uteranus is a carnivore. And as you can see, we can only place a little bit of meat on it at first. And 
if we actually try to force feed meat to our uteranus it won't actually increase its food anymore there's a cap on it when it is a baby so in its first stages you just need to put a little bit of meat on it until it's a juvenile it won't be able to eat from the feeding trough it also says that it needs care in just over 15 minutes so let's just run down the clock and wait for it to need care okay so our baby uteranus is almost ready for its first imprint in 50 seconds but before we do that i just want to draw attention to its health and stamina here we'll just take a look at the health has got 2200 the stamina just slightly less and if we come over to the parents here we can see the baby actually inherited the mother's health and it did get the father's stamina now it wouldn't have made any difference if I'd have pumped say these 39 points into the dad's stamina it would still just get its base stat it always takes the base stat so leveling it would make no difference that's why I don't tend to level any of my breeding creatures we can always see what the stats are going to be then so it got the mum's health and the dad's stamina in this case it's almost ready for its first imprint and there we go so it just wants to go for a walk you'll note that there's a little pacifier icon there saying it's ready for its first imprint and a, a walk is easy enough the uteranus is one of the more difficult creatures to level up imprint wise and as you can see it only gets four percent per imprint so getting a hundred percent imprint on a uteranus can take a little bit of time Let's just bring it back over towards the feeding trough. Okay, and if we just go and have a look at its new stats, we'll see that it's got a slight increase to its health there. The health has just gone up slightly. And if we get a full imprint on this of 100%, it'll increase its major stats by over 20%. On top of which, when we actually ride this creature, it will take a 30% reduction in damage and give out an extra 30% damage. So imprinting dinosaurs are extremely important in this game, especially if you're riding them. And now that it's a little bit bigger, it can actually carry a little bit more meat. And that should be enough. And before you know what, it'll actually be able to feed from the feeding trough. So I won't actually need to give this Uteranus any more attention food-wise. So that's the basics of breeding your first creatures in Ark Survival Evolved. I haven't touched upon anything to do with mutations or end game stuff or how to do selective breeding because it can be quite in depth and overwhelming at first but certainly experiment with it and just get used to some breeding when it comes to Ark Survival Evolved because it is actually the key to beating this game and a imprinted creature is going to be significantly more powerful than an unimprinted one. So breeding is the key to beat in this game. I hope you found that basic guide useful, but until next time, I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see you.